The Macro PVE Healer is finally ready and we call it the Bone Doctor. Just like tanking, PVE healing in Elder Scrolls Online has undergone some major changes in Update 31 Waking Flames. In this video, I'm going to go over healing on a Necro, flexible gear options for beginners all the way to advanced, and one five-piece gear set that makes your Necro the leader in group utility. People will assume that healing in ESO is like other MMOs. Massive healing is all you do. Nope, it's not just about healing. It's about adding value to your team by providing damage boosting buffs, resource sustain, and debuffs to make the fight go faster and thus easier. Meanwhile, making sure everyone, well, remains alive. If you want to see me play this build and others, considering stopping by my stream on twitch.tv slash gaming as I play them often. Now, let's get into it. Should you play this build, the strength of the Necro Healer is the ultimate Colossus. This gives major vulnerability, adding 10% increased damage for 12 seconds, making it one of the strongest and most sought after buffs in the game due to its rarity. Moreover, you have an extremely strong burst heal, Blood Sacrifice, that rivals Breath of Life from the Templar, an awe-inspiring ultimate that resurrects dead allies. Necro, simply put, is very unique and powerful and is extremely fun to play. The downside is you'll have to aim your burst heal unlike a Templar who has easy mode click and poof instant heal. And if another Necro is in your group, you may get passed up because some of the buffs are limited to one Necro, but that's for the sweatiest of PvE. Lastly, a gear set that we use in the advanced level from Rockgrove, making the Necro very unique among healers, is difficult to obtain. But these are all minor issues in what I consider one of the funnest and most powerful healers in the game right now, Necro, and you should pick it up. Now we're going to move on and talk about the gear first and explain a few things, why we're using the staff loadouts, what's some beginner gear to start with and how to progress and what is absolute god tier PVE loadout at endgame that will skyrocket your team's overall DPS. The weapon choice is Resto Lightning. Reason why we're using Lightning and want to explain this is the charge trait on the staff with the shock enchant provides major vulnerability via the concuss status effect. This pairs well with major vulnerability via our ultimate Colossus. You're going to have major and minor increased damage when both of these are up by 15%. Also, the Lightning Staff is just easier to land a fully charged heavy attack, and you can get double the resource sustain from an enemy that's off balance. And commonly, I do this in PvP, but the circle above the head gives you the clue that they're off balance. You can rip off a fully charged heavy attack, especially on your Resto Staff, and get full magic really quick. With great buffs, resource sustain, and easily applied lightning staff for the Necro is the way to go, and the Resto is the obvious choice on our front bar because you need the abilities. Typically, tanks and or warden healers will use the frost staff to provide the chilled status effect. But don't listen to me. Test this out, see how it goes in your group DPS, if it increases or decreases, and always listen to your raid leader, kids. Okay, here's the gear section, and we're going to talk about beginners first. If you're interested in where do you start, like I just started the game, I'm below uh, 300 champion points, so forth. The number one five piece that I would go after is Winter's Respite. This is Overland, obtained in Western Skyrim, or you can purchase it on Guild Traders. Simply put, the five piece is going to give you massive ground-based healing, especially if you're using Illustrious Healing from the Restoration Staff. So the very first skill you're going to be using primarily is going to add a ton of healing. This is useful because you don't have all the champion points and other amplifications to healing, making it very strong. You're going to immediately try to swap this out for something that gives you major courage, increasing spell and weapon damage for you and your team. There's two options. One is from a dungeon, White Gold Tower Spell Power Cure. Two is from a Trial Cloud Rest Oli. Both are really good. And remember, as a healer, not only do you want to heal, but you want to amplify your group's damage. So these are your number one priority. And I would focus on Spell Power Cure your white gold tower because you can just do the normal and get it pretty easily now next setup five piece you're going to run is armor of the seducers it's craftable set in stormhaven grotlord and dishon and it's going to reduce the cost of magic abilities by 10 percent this is just really good selfish resource sustain for healers and when you're starting out it takes a lot of magic to really keep out these heals and buffs and you're going to struggle as a new player 
The last thing you want to do is just be sitting there doing heavy attacks for half of the fights when you could be offering buffs and debuffs and also healing. So it's a very simple craftable set, but you're going to work towards progressing and getting different sets to optimize the group sustain. One easy one right out the gate is Worm's Remnant from Vaults of Madness. This is going to give you some magic recovery and it's nice for trials as well. Another five piece is Hollow Fang's Thirst from Moongrave. Both can be run on normal difficulty. So work towards swapping that five piece out for resource sustain so one to optimize damage one to resource sustain and then you have the weapons and or a monster helm so basically if you just start the game you can't complete veteran dungeons the best one i would go with is willpower it's contained in imperial city or you can find it on the dungeon find rewards or purchase it from guild traders and what this is going to do is just give you a whole lot of max magic for the two piece very handy so you're going to run willpower weapons and then you're going to work towards replacing that right away. And the number one thing you should go after is Sentinel and this comes from Darkshade 1. I'd wait till your CP 160. This is going to be resource sustained for your group. There's a ton of different options. Selfish like Engine Guardian, other ones to optimize damage, Earth Gore for a massive burst heal. Tons and tons of different options. But straight out the gate, Sentinel from Darkshade Cavern 1 is your best bet because it's just so easy. And that will get you by for a very long time and working on veteran dungeons and even touching into some trials. And now let's get to the advanced gear setup. So we're going to talk about the monster helm I would swap out from Sentinel and that's Symphony of Blades. This just is a lot better option in terms of monster helm for resource sustained for your group. It works in dungeons and it works well in trials. There's another option you can run as well called Magma Incarnate from the new Dread Cellar dungeons, but I would stick with Symphony of Blades as a go-to and a staple. This can be obtained in Depths of Malatir. Now we've already talked about the Spell Power Cure 5 piece that's going to be on at all times. This is going to give you one of the most important buffs in PvE, which is Major Courage, increasing weapon and spell damage by, well, a lot. And it's actually very easy to maintain high uptime with heals over time, big burst heals coming, and so you're going to want to have this on, especially it's mobile. Oli is very, very good for stationary fights because it has a long uptime, but for the average player, Spell Power Cure, it's easy to get a hold of, it has a high uptime, and it's Mobile, so you can take in a dungeon or trial don't have to swap things in and out now we're going to talk about Saxiel's champion this is from blackwood and an absolute game changer and what the funnest thing about this healer build is so Saxiel's champion is actually a heavy armor set so we're going to put it on our jewelry and our back bar lightning staff and what this is going to do is you and 11 group members perfect for trial within 28 meters is going to gain major force for one second per 15 ultimate spent. This is the critical part of Warhorn that you're really wanting to amplify the group damage. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put Colossus on your back bar. That's gonna give you major vulnerability for 12 seconds. And if you can, you're gonna save up 500 ultimate. It's not just the cost of the ultimate, it's what you actually use. So if you have a 500 stack of ultimate and you drop a Colossus, you're gonna get 12 seconds of major vulnerability and over 30 seconds of major force. Trust me, this will amplify your damage by a drastic amount. Whether it's a trial or a dungeon, this is absolutely staggering set. And it really is what makes it unique. Because when you're doing a boss fight and you're saving that ultimate in between trash poles and using a skill that we're going to show you here in a little bit, it's going to be pretty easy to get 500 ultimate. So your whole goal is in between trash poles to save up that ultimate, drop the house, and absolutely watch them health bars move. And then the front bar is going to leave a two-piece option for a restoration staff. And we're going to go with the masters because it just has really good resource sustain, especially when we're using illustrious healing. Placing that on the tank and or the party can give us very good resource sustain. So we essentially have two resource sustain sets, two damage amp sets, making this an absolute great thing to bring into a group. Now, if you can't get perfected Saxiel's champion, what I'd recommend swapping it out to is something like Hollow Fang Thirst. That's going to be another resource sustained set, but it's going to be very easy to proc on your back bar with a lightning staff, especially if you're ripping off fully charged heavy attacks, and it can be done in a dungeon. So that gives you another option if you can't get this. And there's tons of other options. I have a link in the description below on my website. So check out the written build because this can be updated. We got tons of different gear options if you can't get any of this stuff. So that's the gear. Let's talk about the skills and how this works. 
The front bar is going to be the restoration staff, and this is primarily going to be used for heels, heels over time, burst heel, and so forth. And the three are the pretty much staples in the restoration staff. We're going to work left to right. Radiant regeneration is first. This is a great multi-target heal over time, especially for mobile encounters. So you don't necessarily need to spam heal it, but it can cover a lot of targets. So you're going to prep the fights by spamming this a couple times to make sure everyone's running heals over time. And it has a decent duration as well. So consider this your pre-buff and during to keep this up at all times. Illustrious Healing is the great AoE heal over time. So it has a massive radius and you're going to want to keep this up, especially in stationary fights. This can also proc various sets using a ground-based ability. And how I try to do it is at least touch the tank. Depending on if people know where to stand and how coordinated you are, at least get the tank because if you're having the Master's DSA staff, they'll get stamina back, allow them to block more reliably, and it will help your, out your tank tremendously. But try to get the DPS in everyone if you can. Speaking of the DPS, next skill up is Combat Prayer. It's a very important AoE heal that shoots out in front of you in a line, and it gives major major berserk and minor resolve, increasing damage output and resistances. So this has a short duration of about eight seconds and you're gonna have to constantly bar swap and rotate in between these specific skills and heals to maintain as much uptime as you can. There's also a trick to aiming combat prayer because it shoots right out in front of you. So when you're working with folks in these dungeons or trials, they need to understand not stack on top of each other necessarily, but so you can actually hit everyone in your group, including the tank, because it'll offer a lot of you utility. So I typically as a healer position myself in the rear of the DPS in the tank and hopefully I can hit them with that range. Braided Tether is up next and it's a strong heal over time for you and your allies. It also increases healing done by 3% while slotting and it uses corpses. So when we're using the Spirit Guardian on our back bar, we have an extra corpse just sitting there and this has a great ability to use it and give a lot of healing over time. So you should have a lot of healing over time coming in and allowing you to get massive up time in your spell power cure. Now we have Blood Sacrifice. This is an amazing burst heal that targets you or an ally in front of you. It can also heal additional targets when you consume a nearby corpse. It applies minor defile to you, but due to our creative passive, you're increased healing by 8%, which negates the effect on you. This thing can easily crit for 35,000 or more on a tank and basically heal someone to full. I don't spam cast this because if you're maintaining your heals over time enough, you shouldn't really have a problem with dipping health bars, but the tank takes a big heavy attack and it drops boom this is what i cast and you can aim it remember it's not a templar you can't just sit there and click it and it goes wherever it wants to go and then the ultimate on the front bar is renewing animation so i swap this in and out but this is the amazing aoe resurrection ultimate that can save your group from being wiped so in a group where you don't know the mechanics or you expect to die a lot this is going to resurrect up to three allies in a big aoe and it's going to restore a ton of magic and stamina the skill you can flex in and what i like to use is restoration staff life giver the reason why it's a low cost ultimate and if i go for a res or we're moving and we're high mobility i'm out of magic and i have nothing else i can use my ultimate pool to basically cast a big burst heal and rotate around through the party whoever is the lowest Back bar is Destruction Staff, bar number two, and this is used for buffs and debuffs and synergies. The first ability up is Necrotic Potence. Free heal with massive ultimate generation also reduces damage taken while slotted. It's more on our back bar. It's very useful. This is how you're going to get your 500 stack up of your ultimate very, very quickly is constantly casting this as the mobs die. Though you might want to flex a, some, a skill in Empowering Grasp. This is great utility. So it's CC, applies main or maim to enemies, also empowers your allies in the area increasing healing from your spirit mentor by 40 percent this makes a great flex skill in specific situations next ability up is spirit guarding additional heal over time that gives a boost to our sustain through the passives and creative corpse it also absorbs 10 percent of the damage you take and stacks on major and minor protection making you very strong as a healer the third skill up is energy orbs this is our main resource sustained synergy for you and your allies it also provides a strong aoe heal over time so keep orb active throughout the proximity of you and your allies as much as possible. A Nerving Boneyard is up next and it's an amazing AoE damage skill that applies major breach to enemies and also provides allies with synergy. So I pair both a Nerving Boneyard with the next skill Elemental Blockade. Ground cast AoE ability primarily used to apply the status effect that debuff the weapon enchants making an ideal use with Lightning or Ice Staff. 
So hopefully your tank or a warden healer is using the ice staff to get major chill. You're using a lightning staff to get that minor vulnerability. And with a nerving boneyard, you're providing a lot of debuffs. It's gonna amplify your damage for your team. And then we talk about Glacial Colossus, an insane ultimate that applies major vulnerability enemies, increasing damage taken by a huge amount, and combining it with Saxil's Champion on her back bar, it just absolutely changes the game. Trust me, if you have this loadout and you drop that colo on it, you'll see the health bars just move like you've never seen them before. And that's the skill loadout. Let's talk about the rotation next and how I play this. So it's almost like a DPS uh, rotation, if you will, because on your front bar, you're going to cast three abilities and kind of go to your back, cast three or four abilities and kind of go to your front because the timer is going to be down. So typically I fight, start the fight off with Radiant Regeneration, get those hots, heals over time running. Then I put my illustrious healing big spring down wherever the tank is and try to hit as many people. Then I'm going to back up and peel away and try to hit a combat prayer and shoot that DPS dust through at least the DPS and the tank and try to get them all. If there's a corpse available, then I'm going to use Braided Tether, but typically there's not to start the fight. So it's really just those three abilities flipped to our back bar. We're not going to use Necrotic Potence because there's not a corpse yet. So we're going to maintain Spirit Guardian, throw out an Energy Orb. Then we're going to cast our two ground effect AoEs for buffs and debuffs, Unnerving Boneyard, and then Elemental Blockade. And then I'll go to my front bar and see what's going on. Typically, the first buff to fall off is the shortest duration, which is Combat Prayer. So I'll cast Combat Prayer, I'll cast my Spring, my Illustrious is healing down and then i'll do another radiant regeneration one or two times depending on who's in the group typically there'll be a corpse down and i can use braided tether to get some more healing and then you go back to your back bar you're doing the exact same rotation again first thing you're going to cast off that is energy orbs because it's probably going to be down unnerving boneyard elemental blockade then you're kind of seeing what's going on do i need to suck up a corpse do i need to keep up my spirit guardian and do i need a big a burst heal or drop an ultimate so just like a DPS rotation, the only difference is when something happens where the health bar dips drastically, you have to be able and be capable to switch back to your bar one and provide a burst heal. Now let's talk about the champion points for this loadout in the fitness tree slotables. I go with boundless vitality, fortify, spirit master, and slippery. Consider Slippery the flex spot, so if you like something else, flex that out. Blue Tree, Warfare, I go with Soothing Tide, Swift Renewal, Rejuvenator, and Living Overflow. Green Tree, I go with the Treasure Hunter, Rationer, Liquid Efficiency, and Steed's Blessing. And the miscellaneous options for this build, if you were going to start this from scratch, you could go with Breton. This is incredible sustainability, lack spell damage or increase healing. But the primary thing you're going to run into as a healer is just the resource sustain and Breton is at the top. Next would be a high elf, strong healing and spell damage, though lack some sustain. Third would be an Argonian, great for pure hearing and survival, though lack sustain and has less max magic. The consumables you're going to go with, there's a couple of different options. You can go with the Gold Clockwork Citrus Filet. This is very, very good. That's going to be a good resource sustained food. A cheaper option is Witch Mother's Brew, the purple food. And if you're good on resource sustained, you can go with the Bystat Pickled Fish Bowl. Potions, we're not going to have any spell power uh, buff. We're not going to have any spell crits. So you're going to maintain those spell power pots at all times if you can. Mundestone. I'm going to go with all spell damage on my jewelry, thus use the Atronach Mundestone to increase my magic recovery. It's a well-rounded choice for all setups, regardless if you're at endgame or at the beginning. And Ritual, you could go with that if you need really strong healing, though you're going to lack the sustain. Attribute points, really you're going to need at least 20,000 health as a healer. I would recommend 22,000 with a food drink up because what's going to happen if you're below that or you're anywhere near that, almost every heavy attack or one little mistake can cause you to die and essentially your group to wipe. So having a little less like max magic and a little more max health can help you out as you start. As you become pro and you're really good at this, go about 20,000 max health and the rest into magic. Well, gang, that's a build. It took me a while to get this build done and sorted, but I think I understand it very well now. So I'd highly recommend to come watch me on twitch.tv slash Gaming or come interact with me on Twitter on Gaming one And consider becoming a Patreon to help me crank out more of these videos and builds. And I really appreciate you watching. Thanks for taking the time.